We are looking at live pictures of the floor right now where the vote for House Speaker is still underway. Now in its fourth day, this is the longest that this type of vote has gone on since 1860. Congressman Kevin McCarthy has now lost 13 bids, picking up, though, several key GOP holdouts earlier this afternoon. We want to bring in Rick Wilson. He's a co-founder of the Lincoln Project. Rick, it's great to see you here. So certainly has been a debacle here for the GOP over the last several days. McCarthy, though, gained some momentum to put a positive spin on this, picking up 15 of those holdouts. What do you think? Is he going to get enough? You know, he's going to sell off every valuable asset of the speakership <laughs> until he gets this sort of hollowed out husk of what the job used to be. What he's done is compromise with people who want to destroy the ability of the speaker to manage the house, to lead the house. They want to be able to disrupt any proceeding from the floor, they want to be able to remove the speaker at, at almost at whim. And so I think what's happened is, you know, he's getting he's going to get what he wishes for in the very end of this thing. But it's going to be such a compromising position that his term as speaker will be short and painful. It is brutal to watch unless you're watching C-SPAN, Rick, which has been killing it up 150, 60 percent. Um, in the end here, how does this damage the party, the brand? Well, look, the brand has been fundamentally altered in the era of, of in the post-Trump era. The brand has become less ideological and more performative. It's become about owning the libs. It's become about you know exercising the 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 the, the entertainment complex of what the GOP used to be. You know, it is no longer about limited government and fiscal restraint and 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 government staying out of individual liberty. Now it's about this big culture war idea and this again the the, the idea that you have to everything you do has to be this fox friendly performative show. Um, and I think it really the the party's evolution into chaos. This isn't the last part of the dance, but you know. This is for the last six years. We've seen the party become increasingly disconnected from reality with QAnon and big lie election conspiracy theories and all these other things that have slowly led it to this place where we're at today. And look, even though people are trying to frame this as Kevin McCarthy is the normal guy, of the hundred and of the two hundred members who support McCarthy, one hundred and forty three of them are active election deniers at the minimum. And so, you know, the, the craziness of the GOP has become more and more central to the brand as time has gone on. So, Rick, what, when, when we talk about the future of the party, where do we go from here? Any odds that the GOP will be able to come together, get some sort of support over the next two years, never mind bipartisan support, which we haven't even talked about yet? I mean, look, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a center right you know, fiscal and individual liberty conservative. I don't have a political party in this country I can go to right now. And I think there's going to be a, an increasing sort of gap in in what the Republicans' uh, legacy brand communicates to a lot of voters and what the current brand really is. And as that as that diverges, you know, you can keep all the you can keep all the labeling and the branding, but it, it's not going to be the same thing. Um, and I think you will find voters eventually starting to do what they did in 2020. Uh, and in 2022, that our group is very good at, the Lincoln Party is very good at, is splitting off those those you know educated conservatives and upper income conservatives and saying, is this really you? Is this your thing? Do you really want to spend two years um, uh, blowing up the economy by by debt ceiling chicken? And do you want to spend two years investigating Hunter Biden's laptop? Or do you think the party should represent something different and better? Yeah, I think so this it's going to be a very uh, it's going to be a significant challenge to retain. Uh, the more educated parts of the Republican cohort. Yeah, I think this is what Mitch McConnell's been fearing and, in fact, warning of for years yep. now. Rick, I can't help but wonder what this means when we go to 24 and in terms of a Republican nomination for presidential candidates. How does this play out on a grand stage when the party is going to pick its nominee? You know, look, there, there, there is a lot of talk from a lot of ambitious people you know, from Ron DeSantis to Josh Hawley to Nikki Haley to Christy Nome to Ted Cruz that, you know, all these people think they are the next incarnation. They are missing the fact that even though he is a weakened figure in some ways, Donald Trump still has basically 100 percent name ID with the Republican Party. He's in the race. He's going to get in the race. These guys all have to get on a debate stage with him. And at the end of the day, even if he's holding 20 percent of the Republican vote, 
When he goes then to Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina in 2023, 24, and these and these contests begin, he comes in with an extraordinary you know pad of support. And so it's going to be very difficult to see how these other people crawl up that very slippery slope to chase after Trump, who has a lot of built-in advantages going in. It is still the Trump party. It is still going to be a party defined by his by his excesses and weirdnesses and everything else. And and you know, voters are going to have to make that decision once again in 24. Am I with the party of Trump or am I with the party of America? Of course, it sure was interesting when he weighed in, tried to get the party to vote for McCarthy, and no one budged, not even Matt Gaetz. Um, between now and that nomination, can we just forget about any actually legislating by Congress in the next two years? Uh, I would I would put a very low probability of, of Congress doing any kind of legislative action that isn't purely performative. For instance, they talk about going after big tech. They're not going to go after big tech. What they're going to do is hold a few stunt hearings and show trials, and then the, 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 the lobbying crew for Facebook and Google and Microsoft and everyone else on K Street will write a bunch of checks and they'll shut up. Um, you're not going to see things that are going to meaningfully improve the economy from any perspective. In fact, you're going to see them do things like, like play chicken with the debt ceiling that, as you know, are going to cause a lot of market uncertainty uh, and a lot of a, a lot of, uh, of of difficulties in an economy that, while the fundamentals are good, there's still this weird perception that it's not. Um, and that would probably plunge it into a situation where going into 24, you would have a very bad economy and the Republicans would have done nothing about it except for blow it up on the debt ceiling. I frustrate millions, millions of Americans. Rick Wilson, great to have you. Thanks so much. Happy to be with you. Thanks.